quarantine. It could end for Britons who've had both of their COVID vaccinations. This doesn't just mean when you return from holidays. It's front page of the Times this morning. They're reporting that if you're fully jabbed and you come into contact with someone who had the virus soon, you won't need to quarantine or take those daily tests. Well, this comes as German Chancellor Angela Merkel said double jabbed British travellers could soon be allowed into the EU without the need to quarantine. But this vaccine privilege is likely to cause outrage among many. Well, joining us now is Anaya. Very good morning to you. Look, on reading this, do you think, oh, fantastic, we can get back to normal sooner? Or is it a bit unfair? You know, I've only had one jab. That means some people are going to have to wait quite a lot longer or some people won't get the opportunity because they haven't taken the jab. Well, this suggestion comes from following, obviously, Angela Merkel's visit to the UK, she visited the Prime Minister at Chequers, and this has been an opportunity for Britain to shore up its post-Brexit uh, negotiating skills, particularly against the backdrop of the G7 summit, when there were seemingly more frosty relations with Britain and its European partners, particularly around issues surrounding the Northern Ireland Protocol. Um, Angela Merkel had suggested last week that Europe, the European Union should have tougher restrictions um, against British travellers, particularly around the Delta variant. And also there's been other concerns for British travellers in relation to uh, the European uh, Medicines Agency, effectively not recognising the AstraZeneca vaccine. So Boris Johnson has been trying to negotiate hard on behalf of British travellers in order to be able to travel this summer when they were very much allowed to last summer, despite still many countries um, on that amber and, and red list. So this has obviously been dubbed now this idea of kind of vaccine privilege. And on, on a personal level, I strongly disagree with it. I definitely understand from the kind of broader conversations that we've been having around uh, COVID that if you are vaccinated, then that means that you should be allowed to have more freedom. But I think the principle, and that's kind of what I'm more concerned about in this, of having a kind of two tier uh, citizenship, where if you have had certain medical procedures or or certain vaccinations, that that means that you're um, allowed to to travel more. I'm not sure that uh, that is necessarily a positive thing. I think when it comes to uh, COVID vaccinations, uh, it should be a personal choice. I think that as part of moving into this greater normality, which is what has been suggested post July 19th, that means essentially pulling back on all of these layers of restrictions that have been had. And I think that does include um, restrictions for people that have been vaccinated and not vaccinated. Because at the end of the day, I think we have to remember there has been this suggestion over the last kind of 12 months about worrying about vaccine hesitancy and all of these types of ideas. But in reality, uh, the, the vaccination for the first jab is way, way over uh, 50%. And also the second jab is now over 50%. So we're not seeing this kind of huge vaccine hesitancy, huge rejection. And I think part of getting us back to normality and getting our freedoms back as a whole is actually recognising um, that, that actually not, not having those two tier systems is the right thing to do. And one more point on this, I think young people in particular have been hit extensively by this pandemic. And I think young people have been offered the jab the, the, the last, it's only been a matter of weeks since people under 25 have been offered the jab and obviously there is that wait. So who th those people um, having to then not, ha having to then wait before they're even able to travel, potentially after the summer period where they may be going back to university, being going back to school, I think is incredibly unfair. Yeah, good morning, and I was just about to say, for me, I mean, for young people, it seems it seems so unfair. They've been so patient. They're last on the list. Some have had it, obviously. Some are waiting. Some aren't sure. Um, it just seems madness to me. Is track and trace now redundant, though? I mean, and could we see a change there for for the fact that that surely they're going to look at how, um, as we say, that the sort of system is working regards young people being last to be vaccinated. Surely there has to be a way of letting these these youngsters go on holiday before they go back to university or whatever. I mean, they deserve it, don't they? I think they absolutely do. And I think that we have to start thinking beyond just 
this essentially COVID tunnel vision where we restrict freedoms, we restrict consideration for different generations, we restrict education solely, so, solely um, based off of the fact that we're only looking at one factor, the, the, the responsibility of a government is not to essentially be a kind of medical management. The responsibility is to triangulate many different factors, education, uh, politics, uh, health as well, and, and, the, and for future generations. And part of that responsibility they have in, in making sure that there is intergenerational solidarity, making sure that generations after don't um, have to inherit a much more difficult situation than those before, it, it is part of this um, idea of not actually making young people be hit harder than, than they already have quite extensively during this pandemic. And and you mentioned track and trace, and I think that you're very right to do that. I mean, that has been obviously something that has not necessarily been as effective as it could have been throughout this pandemic. But now many pubs and restaurants are, are, are complaining that they're being kind of forced to close due to staff shortages. So if someone gets pinged, then, then obviously they have to self-isolate for nearly 10 days. And that's on top of already having um, um, shortages. And, and not only that, there's been criticism about not having uh, financial support for people that have to self-isolate. So there's been a very patchy type of support and patchy COVID management, which effectively has, has, has been um, really difficult for people to actually do the kinds of things that they need in order to even self-isolate um, financially. So I think part of going back to our sense of normality on July 19th it, it is actually uh, to, to remove all of these barriers and actually get ourselves able to start living with the reality that COVID, unfortunately, is going to be part of our life for the future. And I guess the tension is that the reality we're living in now is although hospitalizations and deaths are really low, cases are starting to skyrocket again. You know, we've already had a day with over 25,000 cases, and a lot of that is attributed then to the Delta variant. Is there an argument that just says, We've made so much of a sort of marathon, gargantuan effort to get to this point. Those young people, can we just hold on a little bit longer until they've had that second jab? Well, I think that you know, this is part of the problem. The cases doesn't necessarily tell us anything. I think that actually you can um, test positive and you may not um, have symptoms and actually part of the vaccination is is so that actually you're protecting yourself and protecting others. So we may have cases coming every single year. This is part of the uh, discussions that medical professionals are having that actually we may have um, uh, cases rising every single year and so this, this this is just the reality that we're going to have to live with the most important consideration is people having severe symptoms um, and hospitalizations and obviously the the deaths and that is still remaining quite low but I think that that excuse is essentially the one that we've heard for the entire year and actually when you think about it when we didn't even have the vaccinations last year people were able to travel so I think that we can continually have new layers of reasons why we shouldn't go back to some element of semblance but even Sajid Javid the new chancellor and Chris Whitty um, in the last press conference has openly said now that part of the discussion and part of the essentially uh, talking to the public seriously is about how we now live with this virus um, going forward.